All right. So if you guys don't have questions, we're going to dive in. This is um, actually Anne presented this case study. And Anne, what I did is I changed it a little bit. Um, our, I left out a little bit of the information and rewrote it just very slightly from what you had just so that um, everybody could share it. And I added the bone density uh, onto it. So um, let me share the screen here. That way you guys can have a look. And then, um, and then, and you know, feel free to pipe in at any point while we're doing this. Um, and because you're the one who knows the client, um, it was you can just add one, information. There's just yeah. something else before we started is um, on her, on the stairs, she fell up. So it wasn't that she fell down the stairs. She like tripped up and, and fell forward. That's how that happened. Okay. Just okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm. So here is the presentation that I have. Basically, an 80 year old female. She swims regularly and is in excellent health. She has a prior stable compression fracture of T12 L1 and L1. She's kyphotic and walks with a posterior pelvic tilt. So, can you picture what that looks like? Um, for those of you who don't know her, right? Kyphotic posterior pelvic tilt. So she's creating a lot of space in her spine, really, or you can think of that as sort of a flexed spinal position. Um, she says, uh, oh, sit, pose your pose. she stands by hanging in her hips, right? So I'm, I'm assuming meaning like just kind of bone on bone, just hanging out there, no muscle strength, yeah, in the front of the hips. So in, in September, she fell up her front stairs and hurt her back so going up and then below is the report from her doctor um redemonstration of superior end plate compression deformity so just being able to see that that t12 l1 is already there that's an old fracture but she has an, a 30 percent loss of anterior vertebral body height and that's really important and then we can look at what that really means there's also anterior compression of the l2 vertebra stable mild kyphosis centered at l1 l2 so, and that's really interesting also because kyphosis at L1, L2, normally in the lumbar, we have lordosis, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a curve reversal at L1, L2. She has multi-level degenerative changes with mild loss of disc height and end plate something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then osteopenia. So let's look at what that might mean just so that we are looking skeletally at what that picture is, right? So um, compression deformity T12 L1 is gonna be right in here, that T12 L1 level up here. Um, and so she's that's where her fracture is. I don't think we know what that prior fracture is from. I don't know that it matters that much um, other than it probably is not an osteoporotic fracture because it says she has osteopenia. So the first thing that came in my head is this, is to question whether this is all osteoporosis related. And it can't be if now she has osteopenia at 80 and this happened in the past. So, but what it did do is the vertebral body at T12 and L1, and, and I'm not sure if it's both or one, but that's okay. There's a 30% loss of bone height in the anterior part of the vertebra. So if you imagine we take a vertebra that's a block, and um, let me see if I can find, it's, I know this is round, but imagine this was a block. If we take a block and we squash the front by 30%, right? What happens to the shape of it? We get sort of this triangular shape, right? And if we stack that and we have to then put a block on top of it, what's the direction of the block on top? It's no longer straight. It can't be because there'd be a big space. It's going to start sitting in this forward position, right? So if that's the case, then we're getting these sort of a triangulated shape with it big, bigger in the back and smaller in the front. Yeah, I wish my fingers were stronger than you could, yeah. There we go. Bigger in the back and smaller in the front. So we were getting sort of this wedge positioning of the vertebra. And so that's happening at T12 L1, which means that T11, is going forward, which typically, right, we go kyphosis in the thoracic, so it may not be as apparent, but then here, we're also gonna go forward in our lumbar spine, potentially, which is gonna put her into this 
um, reversal of the curve, right? That throughout the kyphosis at L1, L2. Mm -hmm. So stable because there's, there's no other fracture. It's just structurally now that way, yeah? So then multi-level degenerative changes with disc of height, right? And then some osteopenia. Her spine specialist says she's now cleared for all exercise, including Pilates with no restrictions. And that we're gonna talk about too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she has some sessions with a PT Pilates specialist. She said it helped her tremendously. doesn't wanna drive that far. Um, she came pain-free, but, but she can't walk or stand very long and feels weak. She can't lie supine because of the mildly kyphotic T1, 2. So this is um, up top now, at, at the, up at the top of the spine, Anne, or is it no, the T12, the, the L1? So she okay, can't, so this is, because of the lower one, it's sensitive where it comes back. Okay, so the, the T12. <laughs> the, no, the kyphotic L1, L2, the, the low, low one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, T12, yeah. L1. The one there that's... The wedgy one. <laughs> the wedge one. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So, um, okay. So that feels uncomfortable because it bulges and is sensitive. We can make her comfortable with soft wedges on either side and a pillow under her lumbar spine. However, that emphasized her posterior tilt even more. Uh, yes. Um, capable of neutral spine and quadruped, but can't go anterior past neutral, not because of pain, just no mobility, right? And now we know why there's no mobility there, right? It's structurally that way now, yeah. So this week she came and said her left lower back was hurting from a 15 minute walk that she had taken two days ago. She's frustrated and sad, getting up and sitting down caused some pain, but gentle movement once in position does not. So she's actually standing a bit straighter when she left. She said she felt better the next day when I checked with her, which is great and amazing. Um, and then we'll just do a quick look at this and then we can start kind of asking questions about her. So she was evaluated at age 78, for osteoporosis, bone density calculated normally. Basically she has a T-score, um, uh, oh, sorry, this didn't say, it. okay. So normal in, in T-score, is going to be osteopenia is between negative one and negative 2.4. Osteoporosis is usually uh, above or more than negative 2.5 or less than negative 2.5. <laughs> you want to say that? So in the lumbar spine, she is okay, it seems, because her score is 0.9 or negative 0.9. Um, at the um, left hip, we're at negative two. And at the left, sorry, total left hip, we're at negative two. At the left femoral neck, this is where she actually has the most problem is the femoral neck. So really um, she doesn't have a high risk of fracture. It doesn't look like a 10 year fracture. Here is um, major osteoporotic fracture. Her fracture risk is only 25% in her spine and 7.5% in her hip. So not a high percentage of a fracture risk. So that, but 25% is one in four, right? So this, um, this is where I, and I'm not a doctor. And so maybe I have no right to say anything, but um, the doctor said no restriction here. And so, but let's talk about what she has going on. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you guys talk. What does she have going on here? Maybe just start with her posture. What what do we have going on with the posture? So she's a little kyphotic. Um, obviously, she's rounded. Um, she's actually really open in the front. Um, I think that's partly to do with her swimming because she she swims breaststroke, so she has to pull up a bit to get her head out. She doesn't put her head in. Um, oh. So she's she's rounded, but she's also very open. So the shoulders haven't come forward. Um, she mm -hmm. just kind of leans forward a little bit, which I think is what her daughter's always saying, just stand up straight because it seems like she should be able to pull herself back. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, she has that pelvic tuck and she's kind of really aware of it. She knows that she stands funny and walks funny, but she doesn't know how or why, how to fix it. Okay. But, and she has pain when she walks. Well, yeah, she didn't used to. So before the the fall up the stairs, she would oh, walk. Okay. And then okay. after 
after this incident, um, that was September and she was in pain. I think she didn't see the doctor for a while. And then they did the assessment and they found the, the fracture. Um, but then she was cleared. So she had been, I think she had been swimming and now she's swimming a lot, but then she tried to go for a walk and she said, I get, I get too tired. And then this, this last week, she said she was actually hurting from just 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So any other thoughts about, okay, so what else could be going on or thoughts about what else could be going on here? She's definitely weak in her hips. Um, mm -hmm. We did some, we did some work on the chair and it's, it's challenging. Um, but we did, we did some standing, the step down, everyone calls it something different, but the standing mm -hmm, step yep. down. Um, and she, she did it and she thought it was great. Um, and she, uh, what else have we done? But you can, I mean, you can tell she's weak in her hips and her legs. How does she do like lying down? How does she do we lying down with that <laughs> fracture? So she, yeah, that's that's the first time she came. Um, she said that she had been doing work on the reformer. So we padded her all up, um, which really put her in a tilt to when we got her situated. And she was fine with footwork. We didn't go into legs and straps. She was fine mm -hmm. with footwork. Um, we did some arm movements, very light. She was okay with that. Um, and that was about all we did laying down because she kind of was over the laying down part by then. That was, you know, 20, 25 minutes and she was ready to get up. Mm -hmm. So let, let's talk about the weakness. Is the weakness um, orthopedic, I haven't been doing anything weakness or is it, does it seem like it could be some other kind of weakness, like a neurological kind of weakness? It doesn't seem neurological. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. She's able, she's able to, you know, she can do the footwork, she can press away. Um, she did the, the, the step down. She got her balance with the pole and she could do it. Um, she can go sit to the end. I'd like to see how she would do if she did an actual, you know, stick your, stick your bottom out, let's do a nice squat and come down. And she could come mm -hmm. down and up without her hands. So um, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty good. Um, we tried side lying with the, on the trap with the spring. That was a little too challenging. So we, we backed mm -hmm. off on that. That was a little too challenging for her. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna zone in. Well, Allegra, Kim, do you guys have an idea where I'm going with this? Uh, no, I, I lost the question that you had. Oh, <laughs> right um, in, in one. <laughs> The weakness, what could be causing the weakness? Well, if she had to be inactive, I think that, um, you know, because of the fall, I, I think as they, as we get older, it's much easier to get out of condition. But I, I was also wondering too about um, arthritis, pain from arthritis. In but, the, where, arthritis in? Well, in the hips, in the knees, in the back, mm -hmm. pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. Anywhere. She seem to have a lot of. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> she seems to be okay. Like she can get down on the floor. She mm -hmm. can get up from the floor. Um, so it's kind of she seems really mobile and in really good shape, but then, kind of not. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know if it's she's not strong because she's just not structurally aligned and can't get the, the right muscle firing. Or, I mean, she's definitely deconditioned. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a thought. Yes, go Allegra. Um, and this is just coming to me, but um, it might, is she maybe have like, Cause it says, you know, low backs hurting. Is she maybe have like really, is she really tight? Like her legs are really tight. Like, does she need a little bit of stretching maybe? Would that help in this situation? That's my two cents. I think, I mean, 
Go ahead, Anne. What do you think? I'm here? just thinking we haven't, you know, we haven't done anything where I could see what kind of like range she has just because I was trying to keep things small. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, she, I don't know. <laughs> She doesn't seem overly, overly tight. Like I said, like she'll get down on the floor. She's stretched out on the floor. Um, we didn't, I didn't like take her leg over her head or anything to check her hamstrings. So I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, okay. I think, I think stretching can always help get you more, um, get you more uh, release tension so that you can have more X muscle activity. So in a, especially in opposing muscle group. So for example, if she's flexed a lot, her hip flexors are probably really tight, um, which maybe makes her hamstrings very hard to activate because they're on uh, in a less than sufficient position and the hip flexors are taking over. So if you were to stretch her hip flexors, you may be able to get some hamstring activation, which could help. But I really, um, I really want to pose the question as to, I'm um, coming back to, okay, we've talked about that there is weakness. We've talked about some possibilities, but I really want to come back to why else there could be weakness. Why there's two things here that are really like highlights for me. One is this multi-level degenerative changes with mild loss of disc height and end plate changes. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to think that it says, so we can say end plate changes and fill in the blank there. Um, so we have this thing going on. And then we have a 15 minute walk. Um, that hurts her, right? 15 minutes is not a lot of walking. Um, and it could be that it's hurting her because she's had this injury or some sort of injury that's still not healed, but we don't see that anywhere. And it was September and now we're in February, right? So we don't, there's no evidence of some other major thing. And the reason I highlight this is what happens if we lose height of the discs? So degenerative changes, Kim, you were onto something with the, uh, with the arthritis, osteoarthritis. And I think I would just focus on the spine for a minute because that's where we have a little bit more information. But um, what happens if we have like, mild loss of disc height for somebody who's 80 is really not much, right. Um, right? That's not a lot of disc height loss. Most people have degenerative disc disease by the age of 50, like some mild loss is pretty normal unfortunately, pretty early on, right? So this is not bad for an 80 year old, but multi-level degenerative changes. So that could be what's queuing into that arthritis, but her symptoms, so who are the, what is the population, or if you guys know, what kind of patient population cannot walk and has pain, has difficulty standing, difficulty walking because of um, weakness, or inability or pain, or they want to sit down after they've walked and then they can get up and walk again. People with stenosis usually? Some kind of nerve compression or a pressure on the nerves from the discs compressing. Yeah, um, these are all good things, right? So if the discs lose height, um, we could potentially have a nerve impingement happening. Right. A nerve impingement is an interesting thing, right? Because it can cause weakness in the legs very easily, um, especially in the lumbar spine area. And then to Allegra's point, the people who don't like standing um, are people who have stenosis. They don't like standing and walking brings on their symptoms. In fact, they cannot walk very well. In fact, uh, we had a client yesterday, was it? I think yesterday, Allegra and I together, who that's her problem is we're trying to get her strong. Um, after a hip surgery, but she has stenosis in her spine and she can't walk to get strong. So we're trying to have her spin, spin on a bike instead because she could be seated on the bike, right? Um, so those two things, the fact that she can't walk and the fact that there's some degenerative changes in the spine, the fact that there was this anterior compression and the structural difference in her spine makes me wonder if there's some stenosis or osteoarthritis stenosis some nerve compression happening when she is in that vertical stand, st standing position, um, which would also explain the posterior pelvic tilt, right? right. What, are, what is somebody trying to do in a posterior pelvic tilt when they are, when somebody stands in a posterior pelvic tilt, what does that do to the alignment of the spine? 
feel like they feel like they have a little space in their spine. So somebody who moves into a posterior pelvic tilt um, is trying to create more space between the vertebra, which creates a little more space between those nerve rootlets that are exiting, right? So if she's going into a posterior pelvic tilt in her pelvis, right, she's potentially trying to save herself from compressing the nerves back here. Now, when we go to walk, what do we have to be able to do? Extension. So extension of the hip um, needs to happen. So, Anne, does she have good hip extension? Um, she, I mean, it's not great because <laughs> she's, she can't, she's kind of, that's why I was, when I had her in quadruped and I was trying to see if she could move her pelvis at all without pain, just because I, I wasn't sure what the whole tilt was. I mean, and obviously there was the, I knew there was a kyphosis and I didn't know if she was holding herself that way because of pain or just because of, she couldn't move. Um, I don't think I had her take a leg up though. I think we were just working to see if she could tilt the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. So let me ask you one more question, anybody. If you can't extend the hip enough in gait, but you still have to get extension to pass your leg underneath you, you have to have some extension and your hip isn't extending enough, where are you gonna get that extension from? Your sacrum. No. Your, yeah, really lumbar spine, exactly. So wherever you can move, which is lumbar spine into extension, right? So it's likely that the walking, there may be not enough hip extension. So then um, she may be also extending the spine a little bit. And if she's, ex if she's constantly in this posterior pelvic tilt, maybe to protect something at the nerve root level in the lower spine, and then she goes to walk and extends, she could be compressing something down here. So this is what's going on in my head is I wonder, and right, we have no evidence of this in what we're looking at here in the x-ray. We only have multi-level degenerative changes. We have an interesting dif different or changed structure of the T12 L1. So that is gonna put her in a posterior tilt higher up or kyphotic posture higher up in the lumbar spine, which, um, but then we also have her posturally tucking her pelvis. So, but here it doesn't say there's nerve root compression anywhere. It doesn't say there's spinal stenosis anywhere. So it's interesting that she's, but she's carrying on as somebody with osteoarthritis or spinal stenosis um, in her positioning of her body choice positioning where she has it. Um, and her symptomology is very indicative of something else happening, like a stenosis or a, disc com a nerve compression, nerve root compression. So I would treat her that way because, and, and you kind of already are because she, te she tells you she has pain if, if you don't, right? So, but, but I would um, want to ask more questions. <laughs> I want to talk to her doctor and say, what is really going on here? First of all, Second of all, I would come back to this. Um, sorry, do you guys have questions about that? No comments, or you can argue with me. I don't. I don't always have the right answer. <laughs> if you think differently, <laughs> no. So just think about that. Roll it around in your head. See if it sits right, and maybe just just be curious about it. I wonder if. You know, some of that weakness could be, and maybe one way that you could tell, Anne, is if you put her in a flex position in that posterior pelvic tilt, so you had her on the reformer with her in the posterior pelvic tilt, were her legs pretty strong in that position or was she still seeming as weak as when she's standing? Like, does she feel stronger laying there or does she feel the same standing versus, you know, you could ask her, do you feel stronger when we support you on this reformer for leg work than when you're standing up? Because that if we put her in supine and curl the tail underneath, then we actually are um, putting her in that posterior tilt. We're creating more space in the lumbar region. And then if we go into footwork and she feels like, oh, I'm so strong, I'm doing so well. But then you stand her up 
and you create the same sort of sit to stand motion. And she's like, this is really hard all of a sudden, right? Um, it, in standing, or you do like the standing leg press. You said she felt good doing that too. Um, so, but it would be curious to see if positionally she gets a lot stronger in supine with room with her with herself and post your toes, because that might speak to what what's going on a little bit. Or we might suspect if that's the case, we might suspect more nerve compression. If that's not the case, I could be totally wrong, right? It could not be at all. Right? But it'd be it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna jump to this one. Um, the no restrictions. So here I'm gonna step on a line and say, I beg to differ. I don't agree with the doctor on this one. Um, anyone else wanna pipe in? <laughs> That's what totally threw me. I I said, are you sure? <laughs> Cause when she first came, she had, she had sent me an email and I said, she said, I have a back problem. So I said, please explain. And then she sent me all this list of compression and fractures. And I said, oh, and what has your doctor said in terms of um, restriction? And she said, no restrictions. I can do Pilates or yoga or anything I want. And I was like, really? Okay. So that's when I was kind of thinking, wow. So that's when I thought, okay, well, maybe we'll try to get to see if we can undo the, the posterior tilt and maybe you're just holding it there out of habit or whatever. Um, so I thought, well, <laughs> your doctor said it was okay. Let's just see if there's pain when you do it, which there wasn't, but she couldn't do it. So that's why I'm still wondering about the whole no restriction thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, um, in your, in your mind, like any of you in, in your mind of best practice, what does your like gut tell you here? What's going to be best bet for this person? So would you roll her up and down her spine? No. No, no. no. I mean, keep her in back safe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Keep her in and quadruped keep... even. Mm -hmm. Or on her back. Standing. Quadruped and standing. Mm -hmm. And Kim, sorry, I'm just going to make you, I'm going to push you on this a little bit. What are the things that make you want to keep her back safe or what we call back safe? Or maybe we should explain what we even mean by back safe. Oh, well, uh, no, no loaded flexion or minimal loaded flexion. So no, no legs up. I can't see that Anne would have her bring her legs up over her head no. anyway, but, um, and no rolling up. So flat on, flat on her back um, for any supine work. Um, and then trying to go into quadruped, which would be, which you said you did, I would do that too. Um, mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Dana? Yeah, yeah. And there's one, so there's two, two things in here that make me go I'm not buying the no restriction thing. One, one oh. of them, what are the two things in there? Well, her age, first of all, just, mm -hmm. just I would definitely be guarded um, just given her, that she's in her 80s um, and the fracture frightens the heck out of me. The three fractures? <laughs> the three fractures frighten the heck out of me. <laughs> so those are the things that mm -hmm. I would be very gentle with and about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's one more thing I'm going to, sorry, I keep pushing you guys. There's one more thing that makes me not want to, even if the osteopenia and the fractures weren't there, this right she's 80 yeah and the discs are compressed right mildly but there's degenerative changes in the vertebra and the discs are compressed so any disc dysfunction really doesn't love loaded flexion right so we have a lot of reason why um, a loaded loaded flexion is not her best bet yeah not that i assume and you were putting her in loaded flexion i'm just Right. <laughs> I wasn't, didn't mean to say that at all. <laughs> so yeah, I would totally agree here with um, quadruped. Um, I would totally agree with like what your plan was going to be. I think the main question that Anne came asking, and I didn't write it down here, 
But um, do you want to ask it, Anne, or you want me to say what your main question? My main question is, should we continue to work in that posterior tilt, or is that just kind of exas exacerbating the problem of teaching her to be in that tilt, or should we try to work? So my, my thinking was we work in all planes except supine because it's just pushing her with all the padding. It's just making her tilt even more. So I was you know, thinking maybe we just work in any plane except supine and try to maintain what she has and not push it further. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna mess with her kyphotic little wedge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you guys think? Well, I think I'd go with, so as far as being in supon, I wonder if you put something of towel under her, um, if you put a towel under there, the where, the lumbar spine? Yeah, so that's what happens is, is the little wedge, you can yeah. feel it in her back and it's, it's rather sensitive. So if okay. we put her in supine, I have like foam, like little soft wedges. And so I mm -hmm. wedge each side and then, um, and then she needs a pillow then underneath her, her sacrum and her lumbar. So with all of that wedging, she's mm -hmm. even more tilted. Mm -hmm. So she's nowhere near neutral. She's, you know, she's super posterior by that time. And that's mm -hmm. when she's comfy. Um, and then she's like, great, let's go. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, but <laughs> is that okay? I, well, I don't know. But that's, that's my biggest question. Yeah. 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 So I guess I would. I'm saying that you're probably going to say this. Sorry. I, I, the going back to the walking and being tired walking after 15 minutes, I probably maybe would have her come come back to standing, and try to just gently get her to stand with good posture and work more functionally that way. Mm -hmm. That's a thought. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dana. Go ahead. No, no, please. I love it. Uh, anyone else? I need to speak less and let you guys speak more. So anyone else want to pipe in there? All right. So yeah, I, I, and I'm on track. Um, so here's what I think. And I think I might've emailed you this. I think she's pretty fixed structurally mm -hmm. in this position that she's in. And I think um, while I think some of that pelvic tilting can probably be remedied, I'm not sure how much of it actually she's going to get out of because of her structure at this point. So I'm of two minds. Um, on, on Kim's track, of uh, she could do the standing work and standing leg lower. That's going to be super functional strength work. So I love that idea, um, which you also did and yourself. Um, is it wrong to wedge her and get her in supine? If she feels great in that place and you can get more work out of her legs there, we can strengthen the muscles in her legs that way, okay. right? So, <coughs> so if that's a place where you can put her, the rest of her body's safe, you don't have to worry about it and you guys can go to town on leg strengthening, just pure leg strengthening, then maybe you do that. And then when you get her up and standing, you're like, okay, now we need to get you into a functional posture. And I want you to work pressing this bar down in a functional posture. And that's where you're starting to correct her posture. But sometimes I find it's really nice to just stabilize the client as best as you can, have them be in a comfortable position and not have to worry about the finite details of the rest of their body because the rest mm -hmm. of their body is really supported and safe. Mm -hmm. And then we can just get some serious leg strengthening done. Okay. For her. So, you know, that, that um, doesn't answer your question, but it gives you both options, right? And, and then working with her, you can kind of see, um, to Kim's point, though, and to yours as well, that we do want the function is really the key, right? It's getting her more functional. That's what's going to make her smile is when she comes back to you and says, I did my 15 minute walk and I have no pain, mm -hmm. right? The problem is I'm not sure why she has that pain based on these findings. And so it, there's a chance that we're not going to get her to do a 15 minute walk without pain. Mm -hmm. If there's nerve compression and discompression that's causing it and or a stenosis um, or, you know, like an arthritic change is actually compressing a nerve. 
we may not get her to that 15 minute, not for a while anyway, until we get her a whole heck of a lot stronger, create some space back there for her. Um, but okay, so, so one other thought then is if we want to help her not have to extend her spine in walking, what's one big thing you would do for that? You're gonna go, oh, of course, right? If we want her to be able to walk without having to extend her lumbar spine to walk because her, because of her tightness, then we need to go back way back to what Allegra was saying early on, which is posture. <laughs> posture and what did you say, Allegra? Do you remember? I'm putting on the uh, spot. Stretch, stretching. Stretching. Oh. <laughs> right. So this is where the stretching is going to be way to her benefit. The question is, how, what are you going to stretch, Allegra? I guess I'm thinking of our other our clients. Um, I would stretch her hamstrings. I mean, her quads first, her and her hamstrings and her piriformis. And keep going for the leg to pass behind the body. Our hip flexor. <laughs> yes. So as. okay. So yeah, hip flexor, psoas, and quads. Absolutely. Yeah, everything else, yes, too. But those are the ones that are going to allow that leg to pass behind her. Okay, so how on earth are you going to stretch that without extending her lower spine? That's where I want to retire and go get a different job because <laughs> that's going to be the challenge, right? How do you stretch somebody's hip flexor if they're super sensitive in spinal extension? Oh, is, well, is that like we did the last week, I think over the roller, because they can be in a posterior tilt? Yeah, that would be great. So something where their butt is actually propped up into flexion, we use the foam roller a lot to do that. We call it hips on roller, and then extending the one leg out. Mm -hmm. That would be probably a best bet type of scenario. But are you going to get her, do you, and you know her, do you think she's going to get her butt up on a foam roller? I think she yeah. can. Oh, she is. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Awesome. She was bridging last week. She's so, so she's okay. she's super mobile and like willing to do anything, and and she can. It's just she can't. She's a little tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe we could do that with her. Um, sometimes that's the hardest part is getting that hip flexor on stretch without extending the lumbar spine. Um, or even a quad stretch without a lot more. Uh, this has been a leg in my challenge <laughs> recently. This is one of our clients. We cannot get her to stretch her quad even without going into lumbar extension. Mm. So um, so it can be a super challenging ask, right? So, so that's why it's like, I think I need to just retire, get a new job when I have to stretch people who are really cannot extend and need to have their hip flexors stretched. Mm. So, but yeah, if you can find a way to stretch her hip flexor that doesn't cause her discomfort, I would go to town on stretching those hip flexors <laughs> right? because then I'm going to get extension at the hip and I can have her be in a more neutral um, pelvis position without lumbar extension and compression, potential compression on any nerves or discs or right, any structures that would give her that heavy leg fatigued feeling um, mm -hmm. in walking which is maybe not the situation here. Again, we don't have a lot of evidence pointing that direction, but there's, I feel like there's something missing that we don't know mm. potentially here. So. Yeah, we did. Right, um, what other, go ahead. We were yeah. doing a little bit of, with a ball behind her back and just reaching back. And she felt um, quite the stretch in her abs. So I think maybe another place to try and get to just opening the front a little bit because she's, she said, oh, my belly, <laughs> my belly is stretching. So that might also be pulling her a little forward. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So anterior structures, I would definitely work to stretch those. Um, get, can she lay prone, you think? Yep. Yeah, how about working in prone? Yeah, that's we did a, a little bit and she could do uh -huh. it no 
she's awesome. super strong and mobile. It's, she's kind of, she's a conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think, and, and I, here's where I think sometimes we just don't have the full picture. And I think in this case, there might be more going on in her spine than we have the picture of, which mm -hmm. is why I said is it, um, because that would explain it. Uh, it would explain how she can be strong and mobile and flexible in a lot of ways um, and still have pain walking, mm -hmm. right? Can you, um, it also- Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. It's Dale. Sorry for all the technical problems that have occurred. I couldn't join you last week, but I have a husband who's 83. Um, very athletic and a line foreman for the local electric utility. And in addition to everything that's going on in her spine, he has vascular disease. So his legs tire mm -hmm. and the orthopods aren't going to see the vascular disease, but you know, we've had, we try to stretch. So as we, we, we try to work with the disc, but his legs tire, not from the spine, but from his vascular disease. He did have a fem pop. And right now we're watching again, if that has to be stented. So I do wonder if there's something vascular going on with her be besides her back. Hmm. Thank you. All right, Anne, you have some questions to ask now. Uh, I need to go back and ask her, <laughs> have you, has this been looked at? You know, um, these are, uh, thank you so much, Dale. That was great. Um, it, yeah, it definitely could be vascular um, and not, not orthopedically from the back. So perhaps that's the missing piece. Hmm. There is that tiring. She does have, you said she had pain. Um, so maybe dig into what that pain was a little bit more and see where it was, what it was. Um, see if she ever, if you can recreate the pain feeling that she has while she's walking in the studio, mm -hmm. our, our tendency is to like really um, shy away from it. I think if they're in pain, we want to get them out of pain. Absolutely. You absolutely want to get them out of pain. But then ask, um, where did you feel that pain? So sometimes you can really help them localize where that pain is and that'll give you some idea of what you should and shouldn't do, right? If, um, if, and it's, if it seems to come on in a similar type of position each time, like in her case, if it seems to come on with lumbar extension, that's what we're looking for is to just check and see, does it come on with lumbar extension? Um, because if it does, I know I need to keep her out of that. And then okay. if that's the case, then I wouldn't worry too much about her posture, um, changing the posture because changing her out of a posterior tilt if extension hurts her and the regular lumbar lordosis hurts her is not gonna help her actually. I would just open the hips, open the legs and see what you what kind of good motion you could get with that posterior tilt there. Okay. Right. So even without having to know exactly, but just trying to see or notice the times where um, it's coming on and, and kind of putting that in your mind and then trying to figure out how you work around it that you're not hurting her or you're giving her good advice for home. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, you, do you think, um, so if she can't get very, a lot of hip extension, um, can she get her glutes to strengthen? That's kind of a weird question. So if, if you can't get your leg up, is it, then it's gonna be a challenge to get those glutes strong, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> In, in hip extension, yeah, you can work from a flexed to extended position. So we, we do this, um, there's a couple ways you can do that, on belly on the arc, our barrel, so that the legs are going from a negative position to a neutral position. That will oh. still work the glutes. Right, the other way is in a squat. That's kind of a squat, um, you can't see me. <laughs> I'm squatting and you can't see me. Um, so here, here, if I'm right, if I can go from squat here, I'm still using those glutes, but right, I'm still um, not having to extend past neutral to do right. that. It's the upward motion of the squat. Okay. So that would also get glutes. Um, and then you could do things like just having her prone, which is why I was kind of like, ooh, get her prone. We'll stretch out. So you could do little baby swans in prone. Mm -hmm. 
you can do even just having her try and bend her legs um so the like, we call it heel glute squeeze when the knees are bent and the feet are pressing up to the sky but oh, she doesn't even have to press the legs up to the sky she could just try and bend her knees there okay right? and that will open up the front structures and um activate hamstrings and glutes a little bit yeah great thank you so, yeah and then the over the arc or the barrel with the rounded belly sometimes protects that lower back and then you're working from the surface of the arc or barrel just to neutral mm -hmm. that'll yeah okay any other thoughts there's a lot in here All right. Well, thank you, Anne. I really appreciate you sharing this with us and all the information um, is great. So if you guys want to share a case study, I'm happy to present that. If you don't have one to share, then um, I will I will come up with one. I'll bring one from our, our studio um, and share one of my clients and share with you on that um, if nobody has one. And if thank you have you topics. That was, yeah. so, that was great. Thanks to everyone for everyone's thoughts. That was so helpful. Oh, great. Great. Good. So glad. <laughs>